and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Sherry. I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday and I would love for you to subscribe. Go ahead and hit the little bell notification to be notified every time I post a new video. Today we are talking about the transportation options at Fort Wilderness. I recently got back from a girls trip to Walt Disney World. I went with three of my girlfriends. We stayed at the cabins at Fort Wilderness and since I've returned I've gotten a lot of questions about the golf cart and the transportation. If you saw my vlogs you saw that we did rent a golf cart and I'm glad that we did and I wanted to film this video to talk about why we rented the golf cart, how much it was, if you need a golf cart, those kind of things because I've gotten a lot of questions about it. We decided to rent the golf cart. I had never stayed at the cabins at Fort Wilderness, none of us had, um, but I had read online and heard from quite a few people that to navigate your way around Fort Wilderness, it really was the best idea to rent the golf cart. And so reservations are required for the golf cart. The golf cart is, I think, a little bit pricey in my opinion. I have my receipt. Including tax, the golf cart is $67 a day. And that is kind of a lot to me. So we were there for three nights, four days, and our total was $201. So I guess that's not that much, but say you were there for like six nights, which is what we usually do, that's another $400. Like that to me is kind of a lot just for transportation. Now, do you need the golf cart? No, technically you don't need the golf cart. So Fort Wilderness is huge. It is massive. It is a lot larger than I anticipated. And there are a couple of different sections, not only of accommodations, but also just sections of the resort. There are three areas of accommodations. There's the area where the cabins are, and they are all located really at the front of Fort Wilderness as you enter. And then there is the, the tent camping area, and then there is the RV area. So each one of those areas is separate. And then as far as services go, there are three areas as well. There is the outpost, the meadow, and the settlement. So the outpost is located right as you enter Fort Wilderness, and that's where the Magical Express is going to drop you off and pick you up. Um, that is where you're going to find check-in, bill services, that's where you're going to rent your golf cart, and that area is also where you're going to pick up the buses. And the buses are not only the buses that take you like to the parks and Disney Springs, but also the internal bus system, which I'll get to in a second. And then there's an area called the Meadow, and the Meadow's kind of located, I guess we'll say, in the middle of Fort Wilderness. And there, there's going to be a trading post, which is kind of like your your gift store, if you will, that'll also have like um, a mini mart with provisions and those kind of things. There's also a pool there. That's where you'll find like the campfire and the sing-along. And then at the back of Fort Wilderness is an area called the Settlement, and most people will know that that is where like Pioneer Hall is, where you see the Hoop Dee Dee Review. That's also where you'll catch the boat to go over to the Magic Kingdom. So the road, the loop, the distance between the outpost at the front of Fort Wilderness and the settlement in the back, um, someone said that it was like 1.5 miles to get between the two. So as you can see, like it is a very large resort and some type of transportation I think is necessary. So you have a couple of options. If you stay at Fort Wilderness, if you stay at any resorts, of course, you can either rent a car or if you drive, you can bring your car. The nice thing about staying at the cabins was that there was a parking spot right in front of the cabin, so you can drive like right up to your accommodations. If I were to stay there again, I would probably rent a car for a few reasons, but I do like that you can park your car right there, but then you do also have to pay for parking every night, so do keep that in mind. But if you have your car, you don't need to rely on the internal bus systems, nor do you need to rent a golf cart because you can use your car to get around. But I will preface this by saying at the settlement, in the evening because so many people come for hoop de doo you are able to drive back there if you're staying at Fort Wilderness, but parking is very, very limited. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you do rent a golf cart, you're able to drive anywhere within that one and a half miles. It was really nice to have the golf cart to be able to just get in the golf cart and drive where we needed to go. But I will say that in the mornings when we went to the outpost to get on the park buses, 
parking was really a premium for the golf carts right there and so sometimes we did kind of have to park a little farther away which was fine but we were also staying at the very front of the resort we weren't staying very far from the outpost so it did feel like a little bit like well, why did we rent this golf cart to park when we're not that much closer than we were if we were to just walked from our cabin. However, you don't know where your cabin's gonna be before you get there. We were signed it when we checked in, so there's that part of it. But it did feel like there was not enough parking for a golf cart on a couple of the days, so that was kind of a bummer. Now we definitely felt like we needed the golf cart when we went back to the settlement and took the boat over to the Magic Kingdom because that was a haul from where we were. It was probably a good like eight minute, eight to 10 minute, golf cart ride from where we were staying back to the settlement. Now the third option which is complimentary is the internal bus system which it looked like it was pretty good um, but I can see where people rent the golf carts so they don't have to rely on the buses. So the bus system starts at the very front of Fort Wilderness at the outpost and so if you're coming back from a park you will get off of the park bus and then wait for the bus to come. There's three different lines. So you have to wait for the bus that goes where you need to go um, inside of Fort Wilderness, which can be, I think, a bit of a bummer because I saw people getting off of park buses and at the end of the night and it's late and they just want to go back to wherever it is that they're staying and they had to wait like 10 minutes for the bus that took them where they wanted to go. So I think that that is really, really tough. And then it will drop you off, but it goes to kind of like the major roads. So you could have like a five minute or longer walk to where you're actually staying. It just feels like a lot at the end of the day when you may have already walked like 20,000 steps. So the golf cart was a lot of fun. I'd actually never been on a golf cart outside of like, you know, the golf course. Our golf cart did not go very fast. In fact, people would like pass us with their golf carts because our golf cart was just slow as can be. We did plug it in every night, um, which was convenient. It was easy. There's no like gas, of course, because it's a golf cart. Um, so it was really easy, but we did get the slow golf cart. And if you watch my vlogs, you know that they are not air conditioned, as we were told. <laughs> so like I said, if I were to stay at the cabins up for wilderness again, I would probably have a car. I didn't particularly care to have to pay for the golf cart which is fine, it's just another added expense that you need to really figure in if you are staying at the cabins. But then, of course, if you are to rent a car, you are paying to rent the car, and then you are paying to park at the parks if you are not an annual pass holder. So there's that expense as well. I just like the ability to be able to come and go a little bit easier. While we do use the park buses when we stay at the other resorts, it feels like it's a lot easier just to walk and wait for a bus and get on the bus and go to the park versus waiting for a bus to go to the bus station to transfer to another bus to go to the parks. It was just one extra step that I just didn't particularly care for. Now, would it hinder me from staying at Fort Wilderness again? No, it would not, but I think that it's just something that everyone should be aware of when they are planning on staying at Fort Wilderness. However, I will say that it seemed like there was a lot more people there than were going to the parks. And so I know that Fort Wilderness is, I mean, it's a campground. You can stay at the cabins, you can bring your RV, you can tent camp. And so I think that there are a lot of people that stay there that aren't necessarily going to the parks every day or maybe going to the parks at all. And so in that case, maybe waiting for park transportation doesn't even figure into the equation. But I wanted to film this video because I have received a lot of questions. And I just wanted to tell you my thoughts about renting the golf cart and the transportation options at Fort Wilderness. If you have any other questions about Fort Wilderness, go ahead and ask them in the comment section below. And if you stayed at Fort Wilderness, I'd love to hear what you thought about it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would love for you to subscribe if you have not already. I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!